All right, watch fans, got another one. Don't know what it is, just came in. Literally have no clue, but we're gonna find out. Pretty sure it's a watch, uh, unless I ordered a coffee mug, which I don't remember. We'll find out. All right. Yep, looks like a watch. Oh, Spinnaker. Okay. I've been looking for, I've been waiting to get one of these for a while. I don't remember what this looks like, but we'll find out. All right, the moment of reveal. Oh, look at that. And it's an automatic. Wow. Spinnaker automatic. This is a gorgeous watch. All right. Let's see if I can find a video or if I can make one. And then we'll come right back into the review. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that video. Um, so if you don't know already or you didn't see the first part of this video, this is, in fact, a Spinnaker. A uh, little bit about this brand. This is a, uh, it is a micro brand of sorts. It is a Hong Kong brand, but it is one that a lot of people are respecting. Um, and uh, it does come with good quality parts. So there's, there's not a lot of people that dislike this watch. Um, it's... And and to be fair, right, Hong Kong has a long history of producing watches. Uh, a lot of people seem to, to think that it needs to be made in one place or another. And, and of course, as an American, I wish everything was still made in the United States, but there aren't too many watches still made in the United States. Um, it just is what it is, even though we had some real greats back in the day. Um, but, you know, Hong Kong, a lot of really uh, nice watches grew in. Um, Gosh, what are some of the other ones from, from back in the day? The the Engram. A lot of those watches were made in Hong Kong. Um, you just don't realize. Even even uh, Bulova. A lot of those watches were made in Hong Kong. Uh, just really depends on the model. Um, I was really happy to get this one when I received it. It is uh, really a gorgeous watch. Uh, it looks like a Hurley. And it actually is. But it is a special edition model. That um, they are not... I mean, you can get it. I really, quite honestly, I think the only difference is that um, it uh, it just doesn't say Hurley on it because it's the special edition one. Um, this one is model, oh gosh, what is it? This is the one that's called uh, Regent Blue. So it does look blue, but it also has a hint of green as well. Uh, very, very nice watch, in my opinion. This is a fantastic watch. Uh, I'm really happy to get it, and, and this is one that I'm going to keep. Um, I'll go into the movement in a little bit, but as I did say, this is a special edition. I'm not sure if you can see, I'm trying to look for it. So if you see right up there, and if I can hold this, I'll try and put a circle around it. But, uh, that is the, uh, only 300 of these were made, uh, and they all came in different colors, of course, but, uh, this is number 64 of 300. I don't know if that necessarily makes it any more valuable, but, uh, it is a, um, certainly a limited run watch this is the serial number you can actually buy these pretty much still uh, but it actually says Hurley on the face instead uh, if you guys have never heard of Spinnaker this is their new logo uh, they did change it recently I personally preferred their old logo I'm not sure why they changed it the old one was uh, the mast and sail of a ship which I thought was pretty cool this new logo I'm not so into but whatever you know I guess companies change, sports teams change their logos, whatever it is. Um, 
But Spinnaker has a couple of really cool watches. If you've never heard of them, they have uh, uh, one such as the Hydrofoil, which if I'm being honest, sort of looks like a, uh, an Omega uh, Speedmaster. Still very nice, of course. And then of course, the there is one of their new ones, a very bold watch called the Picard, which I think I'm gonna have to get my hands on because it is super cool. I really like it. It's a bronze watch. I think you can get it in steel too, but it's uh, bronze, it's got this really cool, I'll put a couple pictures up just so you can kind of see it, but it's got a, uh, uh, a very beveled uh, sapphire crystal, which is really nice. But you know, what? I'll get right into this watch. Uh, we're talking about sapphire crystals. This is sapphire front and back, not sapphire coated. It is in fact, um, Sapphire front and back, which is great. <clears throat> uh, the name is printed on the crown, on the face, on the back weight, and of course on here as well. Uh, this Everything is 316 stainless steel. So the bezel, of course, is too. Uh, the, the bracelet, and this is really the kind of style that I really like. And, and I'll show you guys a, a bracelet from my very first Wenger. And I keep it because I'm still looking for this end link, which I have lost. And if anybody can help me, I would desperately like to get a new end link for <clears throat> my Wenger and finally get this watch uh, back, my first Wenger. Anyways, it's the, it's the same style, and I really like this it's solid link. It's none of that uh, BS stamped and rolled. Um, you can kind of see it's obviously I haven't sized it for myself, but sigh, this is going to be another one that I'm going to have to keep. Um, I have too many. What am I going to do? But uh, I like it. It's. I'm not sure how I really feel about the gold on the hands, but um, I think it's interesting. It contrasts with the with the name, so it's kind of cool. I I think I think I'm okay with it. I probably would have preferred stainless steel, but I did get this um, sent to me unknown, uh, so I didn't really have a say in it. But uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, I I paid. I want to say about 115 for this watch, which was a very good deal. Uh, the actual watch itself, uh, if you get the non-limited edition version, which this is, which quite honestly doesn't really come with anything else. They just take the name off the face. Uh, the non-limited edition is $400. I can't imagine this one is that much more. I don't know what makes it limited edition other than the lack of the name on the face. Uh, I don't know if there's any additional attention to detail. But um, I, I certainly like it, and it is a fantastic watch. It has the NH35A Seiko movement, which is a fantastic movement for those who know it. Um, you know, it's not the most expensive movement in the world, but it is a very good quality movement. Um, it has, let's see if I can remember the stats. Uh, it, um, like 21,000 beats per minute. It has 41 hour reserve time, which is fantastic. Um, it is a 24 joule movement, and let's see if I can get a good, it's going to be hard, but I will put some pictures, of course, at the top, but if you can kind of see it in in, in motion here, um, you know, just very fantastic watch, good solid movement um, all day long. This is one of the best movements that you can get for just a good solid, uh, what do they call, everyday watch, um, but yeah, fantastic uh, sapphire front and back. It is a 200 meter watch. So of course, you know, we've talked about this before. 200 meters is just fine. Uh, this does not have a relief valve because you wouldn't necessarily take it that far, but uh, 200 meters is good for, uh, scuba diving. So if you're going to take this to the keys, right, you can go visit some of the, uh, some of the ships that they've sunk, some of those old world war II ships, which personally, I think they should all turn them into museums, but whatever, it's kind of cool. I guess it's an underwater museum, um, and you can go visit those in, in, in South Florida or in the Keys, but uh, this would be perfect for it, right? 200 meters, that's perfect for everything from washing your hands, taking a shower, to, uh, to uh, actual scuba diving, snorkeling, no problem, all day long, and you, you would be happy to wear this. There would be absolutely no issues. Very nice clasp. None of that BS stuff. I mean, like, I, and I'll show you, too. Like, this is a good watch, but a lot of them come with with straps like this, right, which are still good, you know, the, the, the butterfly clasp, um, this is good, it's good, solid, it works, but they do wear out, these are, are much more durable, in my opinion, um, they are, uh, CNC billet, 
uh, chiseled out. So it they're they're fantastic, and so you know that is a good mark of quality. Everything, even though it is made in Hong Kong, right? It's assembled in Hong Kong, but all the parts just are really quality parts. Uh, it has a, a crown guard, which is also very important, especially if you're going to be using it for things like like snorkeling or fishing. I mean, I, I've heard stories of people telling me that, um, uh, you know, some people email me separately and stuff like that from my eBay auctions. And they said that they've had watches where uh, they've had a fishing line that catches under the crown and pulls it up, right? This is a screw down crown, but it's one of the reasons why a screw down crown really just is simply better for a um for a watch now if you aren't going to get one of those things that constantly rotates it back and forth like at an angle then a screw down crown is kind of a pain in the butt because the last thing you want to have to do is continue to unscrew it because i don't know about you guys uh there was a time and place where i wore the same watch all the time um but that's not so much anymore i usually kind of pick a watch and 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 wear it once every couple weeks you know there's like this one this this um ingersoll that i have is one of my favorites i wear, wear this one a lot good solid watch love it um but this one, one's probably one that maybe i'll wear to the beach once uh or uh i might wear to a party or something or if i'm just out having fun or god forbid it matches my outfit i guess i know that no not that <laughs> but you know so um, every time I'm going to have to take this out, you know, and, uh, and, and, and then wind it up, you know, or shake it and, and set it. So that, that can be frustrating, but still, if you are one of those people that wears a watch on a regular basis, this is a great watch for you. And it's, uh, screw down crown is perfect. It's got a seal in the back, which it compresses against and one in the crown tube. The uh, bezel does work. Uh, it is a little stiff. Um, I, I would say, honestly, I'm not. I'm not really thrilled about how um, how hard it is to turn it, so I don't know how useful this 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 uh, bezel would be if you are actually using it for um, for dive purposes and you needed to mark where your oxygen was going to run out. But it's there, you know. I don't know. Let's be honest. How many people that actually have dive watches actually use them for diving? Probably about as many people that take Ferraris that own Ferraris and actually take them on the racetrack. Um, so, but it is what it is, right? I'm not going to criticize anybody because, hey, look, I just bought a dive watch. Although I do snorkel, I do snorkel, uh, but, you know, whatever. Uh, but fantastic watch. Um, let's see, let's get right into a, uh, let's get into a loom shot because I'm just feeling like doing that next. Oh, that's one I got to fix. This is an old chase door. All right, that is fantastic loom. Look at that. I am impressed. This is worth the watch, quite frankly. They did a fantastic job. You know, I I, I, I seem to recall that last watch that I was, uh, that I showed everybody, the one where it didn't have the bezel lit up. It was still a nice watch, but it was a dive watch. Which one was it? Oh man, it's gonna kill me. But anyways, the bezel didn't have a light up and so it was kind of pointless. And, and actually, I don't even think the numbers did either. So it was kind of, you couldn't even really tell what the time was. You would just see two hands. And then depending on where your arm was, you could be an, an hour off. But that's pretty fantastic. All right, let's let's uh, let's weigh it, because uh, I want to see. All right, I'm going to say about 110. Man, I'm totally off. That is 196 grams. So that's pretty good. That's, uh, that's got some weight to it. I don't know why I thought 100. Well, don't listen to me then. All right, let's do some measurements. Let's say about 40, 46, 47. 47 is pretty, pretty normal. What? I'm totally off. <laughs> okay. 42. 42. Gosh, you know what? I need glasses. And then the lug is uh, about 22. And the depth, let's see, about 15? No, oh, 14. All right. 14. Okay. So not bad. Good size, but not ridiculous. Uh, I, I can't remember what this one is, but it's uh, it's about the same. I think this is like a 43 or 44. 
but gosh, very nice watch. Um, I'm really happy with it. What can I say? Um, I'm just going to have to keep it. <laughs> just like all the others. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this. Um, I don't, you, you know, it's adjustable length, so I'm not really going to measure measure the, the, the width of this, but um, it, it sits pretty. You know what? Let me do the lug to lug. A lot of people ask for that, and I don't think I've been doing that, but I, I want to try and help. So lug to lug, I would say the extreme about 46. So consider that if you're looking to buy one. All right. If you uh, like this review, please leave a like. If you are interested in more like this or you like uh, Spinnaker or if in particular you'd like to see the Picard, I'm going to have to look for one, see how expensive they are, then please leave a comment below. <clears throat> um, and I guess that's it. All right. Please subscribe. Thank you very much.